What's going on everybody? Today we're doing things a little differently than we normally do. So we're we're answering one of the questions all of you have asked us. What do we do about the internet on the road? So all the time, whether we're being stopped in the parks or people online, we'll get emails. Brian, what do you and Stephanie do about internet on the road? And I got to tell you, we've gone through so many paths. And if you watched any of our recent videos, I kind of went on the soapbox for a minute about a, another provider. But let's talk to you about how we got where we're at and what we do today and where we're going tomorrow. So. Ultimately, when we had our sticks and bricks, or we were still living in Michigan, we had Comcast. It was high speed, it was cable, it um, provided us all the things that we needed. We could hook our TVs up to it, and we had no issues, no problems, unless the cable went out, which did happen from time to time, but it's a house, run a new cable, we're back up and running. In the downtimes when that would happen, which it only happened twice over quite a few years, um, we would use a hot spot and when we started getting on, onto the road we said what would we do for the internet and should we look at the hot spots or should we most of the campgrounds we're going to is going to have wi-fi well i'm here to tell you right now the wi-fi at these campgrounds is not good we've had a couple places where we could actually stream some television but it wasn't very good for our work environment now most of you know we are working while we're on the road. We both work full time, 100% remote, um, but we don't do what most of the people do, which is construction or traveling medical nurses or doctors or traveling EMTs or paramedics. Um, but anyways, what we do is more in the technical field. Both of us deal with software. Both of us deal with technical jobs. Um, Stephanie's more in the medical world. I'm more in the automotive or uh, engineering world, transportation world. So, um, so for us, internet is key. We have meetings all the time. We have to collaborate with our teams, both you know around the country, around the world. When we hit the road two years ago, we started off with uh, two hotspots. One hotspot was with Verizon. One hotspot was with AT and T. Um, both of them worked okay. Um, what we found is once we started heading further south and we started getting into the warmer states, although the climate's not important to the internet, it is important to us. <laughs> so as we got to the states where we wanted to stay at and be warming, um, what we found was AT&T worked way better than Verizon did. Now, that doesn't mean that one was better than the other. It just meant that we found better coverage with the AT&T service. And then as we migrated west, we actually started running into more issues where both of them were not as good as we had hoped. And then we brought in a third, yes, a third hotspot system, which is through T-Mobile. Now, the T-Mobile Internet service has been hands down probably the best one we've had anywhere. And that means from as far north as Michigan, as far south as Florida, and as far west as Texas. We've had the most luck with T-Mobile. Um, and we're talking hundreds of megabytes per second. So pretty darn good. Now, does that mean every place we go or every place you've seen us do videos at has been great? No. We've had some places where we've had to split between AT&T and T-Mobile. And in rare cases, we've actually had to break out, blow the dust off, and at one point even reactivate our Verizon hotspot because we actually had deactivated it for both cost and coverage because quite honestly, it's the most expensive and it had the least amount of coverage that we found in the Southern um, States. Now we did start investigating cause we were starting to run into some throttling issues, not with our data plan, but just the, the speeds were slowing down in the peak times and we are hoping to find another alternative to that. Now let's enter in Starlink. So we've talked about Starlink. You've seen tons of other YouTubers talk about Starlink and the benefits to Starlink and what you could do or could not do. Um, Starlink seems to be a good alternative 
if you can't get along with the mainstream data plans or coverage, um, but it's not the greatest when it comes to our being. And here's why. The, the people that had Starlink and had success weren't really using Starlink traveling. They were, they were using residential services and they were, they were playing the system with a loophole in the system to make it work. I'm not, I'm not all about games. I don't want to play games. I don't want to have to cross my fingers and hope that it works or hope that I get, you know, a, an available slot in, in, a, in a section. I didn't want to deal with all that. Secondly, the price was outrageous. It was a, it was a high, high priced um, with fingers crossed plans that may or may not work. So up to around six, seven hundred dollars for the system. Then we have to get it mounted. Then we have to run the wires. And, you know, there's, you know, there's all more of that that has to go along with um, installing it into the RV. Now, all of that being said and done, does it work? Yeah, I see a lot of people use it. Is it great? I don't know. I, I, I've seen mixed reviews, mixed results. So, and I made the mistake of listening to a lot, few other YouTubers without doing my own research. And as you know, let's talk about Nomad Internet. Nomad Internet seemed to be an unthrottled cellular based plan that was okay. Um, some places, some people didn't have service everywhere they went, but there, maybe there's just no service to be had in those areas. Because at the end of the day, they're all based on cellular coverage. Um, so with all the drama and all the headaches and everything else, we were we were swept up. I did finally get my refund from Nomad Internet. Thank you, guys. It only took you two months to do it, but hey, we got it. We're there. Anyways, so we've moved on from Nomad. We didn't go with Starlink. We still are stuck with our AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon hotspots. Now, what are we paying per month? More than we want to. Um, our AT&T is unlimited data, um, pretty good speeds. Our T-Mobile is unlimited data, pretty good speeds. Our Verizon is capped. Our Verizon is capped at the highest plan that they offer. So we try to use that one as little as possible, um, if at all, if, if we need to at all. And it's also the most expensive. So now we're starting to look at alternatives again, we're constantly evaluating what our options are. So going forward in the future, what are we going to try next? Well, we're going to keep our T-Mobile. We're going to keep our, we actually have two modems for T-Mobile, one in our Florida location and one in our RV. Our second, our AT&T, which is our secondary, we're still using that one as well. Why do we need it if we have T-Mobile Unlimited? Coverage. So again, coverage is key. So in the cases where T-Mobile or AT&T may not have the best coverage, the other one typically does. So that's a win. Um, both of them are unlimited, yes, but sometimes the, we need to split who's working on what network, and we just it's a quick check to find out every morning. We get started in our day. We start getting through our work day, and we'll, we'll, if we're running into issues or we find an issue, we'll just do a quick speed check, and typically we'll find out very quickly. One is down, one is up, or maybe they're both just enough for each of us to have our own network. Now, the other thing that we found is the T-Mobile hotspot or the system that we have for T-Mobile only operates at a five gigahertz broadcast. And, and since all of our stuff is smart devices, our, our LEDs, our awning lights, um, we have cameras all around the RV, we have um, all of our TV, we don't use any direct TV or satellite TV, everything is streaming, so we use all our streaming services. So all of our work devices, streaming services, and our smart devices, awning lights, all the LEDs inside and outside the RV are all smart devices. So everyone, you know, you got to have a network that can handle multiple devices up to maybe for two people, maybe 30 devices. So Just what, easy. what other options have we tried? We've looked at the pep wave. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar, pep wave is a SIM card based modem, um, that can handle one, two or three SIM cards or four SIM cards. Why do you need so many SIM cards in one modem? So pep wave has a very unique, um, operation to where you can bridge connections or share data you know you bring all the different sources of data into one one unit and then you can you can combine all the data streams i'm simplifying the whole process but that's how i assume that it works um we haven't done that we have looked at it
So what other plans have we tried or have we just stuck with what we started with? No, we've tried other things. We've tried, um, we had a cellular modem that we purchased through Amazon. It was called a Mofi device. Um, that device took a single SIM card and broadcasted the data internet from the SIM card out to the world to use. It was okay. It worked okay. Um, there was some issues where we needed to keep an eye on it because we were using a pay-as-you-go plan for that just to kind of see instead of committing to a contract we just wanted to kind of see what we could get with it i recommend that for anybody if you're considering something like this do your own research if, if you want to try a different service go to some store whatever store you want to go to whatever your favorite store is buy a pay-as-you-go sim card that doesn't require a contract throw 25 bucks to the wind run the data for a day or two see what you get um, but what we are going to look at now is we're investigating. We've already purchased it. We haven't had delivery of it yet, but is the HomeFi. So HomeFi, from what we can tell, is a service. And we've done our research so far, but proof's in the pudding. We got it. We got to get it in our hands. We go, we're going to do some tests with it and make sure that it runs and works and does what we need it to do. Um, and then we'll let you guys know how it's going um, in a later video. But for now what our hope is or what our understanding is. HomeFi offers, uh, uh, you pay for the device, um, you pay a monthly rate, there's a one-time activation fee, it's just over a hundred bucks for the data plan that we chose and it'll be a hundred bucks a month-ish for the data plan that we chose, um, which there is a cap to it, it's about 450 gigabytes per month. With our AT&T, um, we were able to monitor what our data was when we early on hit first hit the road. And now we kind of get an idea of what that will do. We're right in that ballpark, so we may be a little over, maybe a little under, but that's why we have our other devices to kind of back that up, just in case we get close to that limit. The compelling point for HomeFi for us is that it doesn't need a SIM card. It works, or maybe it already has one. I don't know. Um, but it works with all the three major carriers, ATT, T-Mobile, Verizon. I don't have to have separate plans for each one of these companies. I can just flat out turn the home fi on, connect to it, and go. Um, the, the home fi itself will figure out what is the best um, coverage for the, what carrier is offering the best service in that location, and that's the data that it will use. And more to the point, we even have a um, cell booster on our RV. We've already installed it, and that will work with the HomeFi as well. So the HomeFi can take the signal from our cell booster. Quick side note on cell boosters. So cell boosters only boost the signal. A lot of people have questions about cell boosters. So cell boosters, are they only amplify the signal they don't amplify or change the speed or the data so if you have a low speed area and you're just looking for a better signal then the cell booster will do that it'll boost the signal of the cellular coverage in the rv and it when it works it works when it doesn't it doesn't and it really it's just because maybe the signal's not strong enough getting even to the cell booster maybe it's just not strong enough to get to wherever we're at but does it help? Yeah, if we have a weak signal, but we have a signal, then the cell booster will help. And then it'll So what does our day-to-day -day look like? Our day-to-day, -day, anytime we park the RV, we pull into a new spot, as we're getting set up, once we have our power and once we have our slide and we have you know our, our leveling jacks are done and all our hookups are complete, we'll go in and make sure that the air is kicked on and everything is working the way that it should. We'll release the hound, if you will. We'll let Lucy loose. And then um, as we're kind of just taking a break from all the setup, we will. I'll do a, a quick speed test um, on all the networks that we have connected just to see which one's going to be our, our best or the bogey that we're going to use for that location. I do it every time. I do AT&T 2.5, AT&T 5G broadcast. I do T-Mobile, which is only 5G broadcast. And um, if both of those are, are, are low, then we'll break out the last one, which is the Verizon um, hotspot. And, but again, because we have a cap on that, we try not to uh, use that one unless we absolutely have to. Data is so important to us that we actually track it. <laughs> 
when Steph does her planning, she'll pull it right up on on the app that she uses to do a lot of our booking and our, a lot of our travel planning. And she'll actually, one of the first things that she looks at is cell coverage. Hands down, one of the most important pieces of information you have to have if you're working remote or on the road. Once we're leaving a spot or once we know what the spot is going to be doing, we actually will, will document in a, in a tracking sheet that we have, especially if there's places that we really like, um, campgrounds or resorts that we've gone to that we've really fallen in love with or the location we really love or the area that we really love. We will track um, how many uh, megabytes per second up, how many megabytes per second down that we're getting at that location for each network. So then we know what to expect if we were, were, were where we were to return to that location. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, again, like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what, what other topics you'd like to see from next. If you want to learn more about this or these topics, send us a note, send us a comment, and we will gladly share with you whatever information we have. With that, we're going to wrap this one up. We're going to see you guys on the road. See you until next time.